If you or someone close to you has ever dealt with anxiety, you know how debilitating this can be. In this video, I will be reviewing a study titled the Amygdala Driven Apnea and the Chemoreceptive Origin of Anxiety, published in 2022. A very comprehensive study that gives some good insights. But because of how many things are covered in it, I will be organizing them into four categories. What was the problem? Who is it relevant for? The main takeaways of the study? And what is the clinical relevance? Meaning, what can you really do? Anxiety is the leading form of mental health illness. The sixth cause of disability affecting approximately a quarter of the population. Most research has focused on external threats, external causes of anxiety, as opposed to internal. By internal, I mean things that happen inside our body that causes us to be anxious. Now, what's interesting is that our autonomic nervous system controls the way we breathe. And it has been found that even small changes in the way we breathe and the results this has in our blood gases will affect our nervous system and in particular part of our brain called the amygdala that determines how anxious we are, how stressed we are. This study found compromised function in the amygdala and the breathing of individuals with agoraphobia, avoidance behavior, men with alcohol dependence, asthma, autistic children, people that chronically hyperventilate, as well as uh, mouth breathers. The first takeaway from the paper was a case study of a woman that had uh, a bilateral damage in her amygdala. And uh, this woman could not feel any fear from external stimuli. For years, they were trying to cause her to feel fear and it was impossible. However, this was achieved when they asked her to change the way she was breathing by making her breathe more carbon dioxide. They realized what I mentioned in the beginning, that uh, potentially fear cannot only be induced through external stimuli, but internally. The study reported that uh, patients with anxiety will get uh, their amygdala triggered and uh, will end up uh, holding their breath, causing hypoxia without understanding that this is taking place, without registering the event. The hypoxia can cause a drop of oxygen saturation down to 87%. So amygdala activation will cause hypoxia, which will result in increase of carbon dioxide, which will result in the feeling of fear, a model called apnea-induced anxiety. The study concluded that individuals with anxiety will have smaller amygdala volume and be more sensitive to carbon dioxide, meaning they will have a tendency to hyperventilate. Apneas while being awake or asleep are often caused from different reasons, although in both cases they are linked with anxiety. The main takeaway of the study is that the solution to anxiety is to increase one's tolerance to carbon dioxide. Although it is a common defense mechanism to hyperventilate and as a result uh, reduce carbon dioxide, this uh, has uh, long-term negative consequences and uh, this can be avoided if one trains himself uh, to improve his breathing. The chronic dependence on hyperventilation in order to cope can have a lot of negative effects. If you want to, you can find out what is your tolerance to CO2 by performing the test that I will leave in the description.